Hi yogis, thanks for joining me. Today, we're flowing to a 60-minute vinyasa practice. This flow is perfect for the intermediate yogi. You'll definitely feel the burn in your lower body and core, and we'll cool it all down with some gentle breathing at the end. All you need for this is a yoga mat and two blocks, and if you don't have blocks, you can always use a water bottle. I'll see you on the mat. So let's go ahead and get started in child's pose. Coming about midway down your mat, bring your big toes together so that they touch. Sit your hips back to your heels and then take your knees comfortably wide. So that could be as wide as your yoga mat. That'll be a little bit more like a very gentle back bend. Or if you're looking for support for the lower back, bring your knees and thighs all the way together so that they touch. And then lay your chest and your belly right on top of your thighs. Extend your arms nice and long. Allow your forehead to rest heavy on the mat. And we'll start here today getting connected to the breath. So as you feel your body start to settle, gently empty out all of your air. Take a big breath in through your nose, fill up your belly, fill up your heart, fill up your head all the way to the very top. And big sigh out. Good, let's try that again. So big belly breath in, feeling the sides and the backs of your lungs expand. Fill all the way up to the tips of your fingers. And big sigh out. Good, and then one more time like that from the soles of your feet. Fill up all the way to the very top of your head, the tips of your fingers. And big sigh out. Nice. Then let's start to engage with the Ujjayi Pranayam. This is the breath that will guide us through practice today. So it's very similar to those sighs. We're just gonna modify the way it shows up in the physical body. So same idea, you'll take a big breath in through your nose, but this time feel a dragging of the air across the back of your throat. And then you'll breathe out through your nose. Same sort of dragging sensation across the back of your throat. Good, and try that again, breathing in. And breathing out. So the breath is the guide or the foundation for the practice. If there's ever a pose or a shape or a movement that feels like you can't do it without stopping your breath, you know you've gone a little bit too far. Keeping that breath, start to heavy your palms into your mat and roll forward to your tabletop hands and knees. So hands will be underneath your shoulders, knees will be underneath your hips. You'll spread your fingertips comfortably wide and then we'll roll through a few rounds of cow and cat. So on your inhale, arch and look up towards the sky. Open your chin away from your chest, shine your collarbones forward. And then exhale, do the opposite. Press the palms into the mat, round like an angry cat and draw your navel up and in. Good, let's do that again. Inhaling, arching, looking up to your sky, opening the chin, opening the chest. And exhaling, rounding, pressing the ground away and hollowing out. Good, one more time, just like that. Inhaling, arching, and looking up to the sky. And exhaling, rounding, hollowing out, pulling the navel in, sort of like a crunch. Good, and then let's take that and do that a few times in our own way. So you can stay with this arch round thing that we've been doing. It might feel better to start to draw some circles with your head, neck, and shoulders. You might wanna flip your fingertips around so that they face your knees and that'll help you warm up your forearms, getting ready for some more weight bearing on our hands. Really nice. Let's take about two more cycles of breath here. So maybe starting to even out side to side if you were doing something asymmetrical. Good. And then on your next exhale, come back to your flat back neutral spine. So hands under shoulders, knees under hips. On your inhale, you'll reach your right hand forward towards the top of your space. Think thumb up, pinky down, kind of like you're going for a handshake. And then extend your left leg all the way back behind you. Flex your toes down, but lift your heel up so that you feel your glute and your hamstring contracting. Go ahead, take one more big breath in here. Lift a little bit higher with thumb and heel. And on your exhale round, draw your knee and your elbow together underneath you. 
Good, let's try that again. So inhale, extend nice and long through your fingers and your toes. Exhaling, rounding, contracting, draw your elbow and your knee to your nose. Good, three more times like that. Inhale, reaching out. And exhale, rounding and coiling in. Good, two more times. Inhale, feeling resistance that you're creating in your own body. So the movement's a little bit more sticky. And exhale, round, draw your elbow and knee to your nose. Good, one more time like that. Big breath in, reaching out nice and long. And a big breath out. Good, this time on your inhale, re-extend arm, re-extend leg. On your exhale, we'll go for a side sweep. So take your right arm, sweep it out to the right. Take your left leg, sweep it over to the left. And then coming back together at center. Good, take the right arm over to the right, sweeping the left leg over to the left. Yeah, keep that left leg as straight as you can. And then coming back to center. Good, let's try that just one more time. So extending the right arm out to the right, left leg over to the left, and then coming right back to center. Keep the left leg lifted, lower your right hand down to the yoga mat. Good, from here, shift the weight forward so that the weight's going more in fingertips into your knuckle pads. And on your exhale, bend your elbows. This is a chaturanga prep push-up. So just getting the biceps and triceps warm and ready for a little bit more weight bearing. On your inhale, press yourself back up straight arms. Good, exhale, bend your elbows, chaturanga prep push-up. Nice inhale, press yourself back up straight arms. Good, one more time, exhale, bend your elbows. Yeah, lift the left heel up just a little bit higher. Good, inhale, press yourself back up to straight arms. And exhale, lower your knee back down towards the mat. Good, let's go for one round of cow and cat just to kind of wash things out in the spine. So on your inhale, arch, look up towards your sky, broaden across your chest. And exhale, round, angry cat, draw the navel up and in. Good, on your inhale, let's go for the other side. So left arm will extend forward. Again, the hand is like a handshake. So you wanna think left thumb up and pinky finger down, and then extend the right leg back behind you. Good, on your inhale, lift up a little bit higher. So feeling the whole backside of your body start to fire up here. And on your exhale, round, draw your elbow and knee to your nose. Good, let's try that again. So inhale, reaching out nice and long. And exhale, rounding and contracting, so feeling your core fire up here. Good, three more times just like that onto the breath. Inhale, reaching out through fingers and toe tips. Exhaling, rounding, drawing in, contracting in the core. Two more times, inhale to extend, nice and long, lift up the gaze if you can. Exhale, contract, round, tuck your chin into your chest. And one more time like that, inhale, reaching out. And exhale, rounding back in. Good, this time on your inhale, re-extend arm, re-extend leg. On your exhale, we'll find that side sweep again. So the left hand will go over to the left this time. Right leg will sweep over to the right. Try to keep that right leg nice and straight. Good, and then come back to center on your inhale. Two more times, just like that. So exhale, left arm over to the left, right leg over to the right. Nice, inhale back to center one more time. Exhale, left hand over to the left. Inhale, right leg over to the right, and then back to center, hold, pause, breathe, inhale. And exhale, release just the left hand down to the mat. Good, see if you can lift your right heel up just a smidge higher on your in. On your exhale, shift the weight forward, bend your elbows, chaturanga prep push up. Good, inhale, press yourself back up to straight arms. Core strong here, exhale, bend your elbows lower down. Good, inhale, press yourself back up. Keep lifting in that right heel one more. Exhale, bend the elbows. Good, inhale, press yourself back up. Exhale, lower your right knee down to the mat. Cool, one round of cow and cat. Inhale, arching and looking up towards your sky. Exhaling, rounding, hollowing out, drawing the navel up and in. Keep yourself in this rounded posture. Tuck your toes on your mat and hover the knees just an inch off of the ground. Good, pause right there for a moment and let's refine. Think about scrubbing your thumbs closer towards one another without actually moving your hands on your mat. From there, press the palms into the mat, lift the shoulders up about two inches so that we're really firing up here our chest, our shoulders, getting our arms involved, and finishing touches. Think navel draws in really strong so you feel that crunch-like sensation in your abdominals. 
Go ahead, take one more big breath in. And exhale, hips up and back, downward facing dog. Good, so you can do any movement that feels good here. You might wanna pedal push your heels. It might feel nice to do like a little shake of your head or a wag of your tail. Oftentimes the distance between hands and feet might be a little narrow, so if you need to widen that out in your down dog, totally cool. Take a moment to do that and adjust so that your down dog feels really comfy. Good, and then let's find some stillness in the down dog and refine this all together. So on your inhale, lift your heels up super high. Good, keep your hips lifting up, but bend your knees so that your belly and your chest come closer to your thighs. Very nice, keeping the hips up high, start to lengthen the back of the knees so that the heels come a little bit closer to the ground. They probably won't touch, which is fine. Good, let's do that two more times. So on the inhale, lift the heels, bend the knees, stick the booty up super high. And exhale, lengthening the back of the legs. Yeah, keeping the tailbone pointing up towards the sky. Good, one more time like that on the inhale, lift the heels, bend the knees, think hips up, chest back. And exhale, lengthening the back side of the legs, melting the heels towards the mat. Good, this time on your inhale, lift your heels, bend your knees, tuck your chin to your chest and roll yourself forward to high plank. Nice, on your exhale, let's do the opposite. Bend your knees, come into that bent knee down dog. Good, inhale, rolling yourself forward to your high plank. Exhale, bending the knees, bent knee down dog. One more time, this time on your inhale, roll yourself forward to your high plank pose. Shift the weight forward into your fingerprints. And on your exhale, bend your elbows, bring your belly all the way down to the ground. Nice, once you get there, let's point our toes behind us. Slide your legs together so that they touch. And then take your hands a little bit wider than they are right now. So most likely off of your yoga mat, you'll tent your fingertips onto the ground. And on your inhale, roll your chest up. This is a wide variation of a baby cobra. On your exhale, melt your heart back down to the mat. Let's do that two more times. So on your inhale, roll yourself up, maybe lifting up a little bit higher. And exhaling, melting back down. Good, one more time on your inhale. Roll yourself up, lifting your chest up, maybe straightening the elbows just a smidge more. And exhale, melting all the way back down to the mat. Good, from here, slide your hands back underneath your shoulders. Press yourself back to your child's pose, hips to heels. Let's stay for a full cycle of breath. So reconnecting to that ujjayi pranayam. Big breath in through the nose. And a big breath out. Having the palms into your mat on your inhale, roll forward to your tabletop hands and knees. And then on your exhale, tuck your toes and lift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Good, in this down dog, start to pedal push your heel so you'll bend your right knee, bend your left knee. Good, and then slowly start to take that into a stroll at the top of your mat so your feet will come all the way forward. We'll meet in a forward fold here. And once you get there, I like for the first forward fold to practice feet hips distance apart, soft bend in the knees, and then just a gentle sway from side to side. Very nice. Come back to stillness in the center. On your inhale, flat back halfway lift. So draw the fingertips up to the shin bones, roll the shoulder heads back, and think about pulling the navel in pretty strongly here. So really nice support in the core. And then on your exhale, we'll go for easy spinal twists. Bring the left fingertips down to the ground, bend into your left knee, and reach the right arm up to the sky as you start to stretch the right leg straight. So this is an awesome time to use a block, especially if you find the left hand is not quite coming to the floor on this. Bring the block underneath the left hand so that the ground will meet you where you're at. Good, on your inhale, think about lengthening out in the spine. On your exhale, rotating your chest a little bit more. Good, look up at your top right hand, and like I've got a hold of your hand, start to drag yourself all the way up to standing. Both arms will reach up and overhead. Take a big breath in here. On your exhale, slide your right hand down the side of your right leg. Reach your left arm over towards the right. So we're going for a big side body stretch here, grounding down through the pinky edge side of your left foot. Take one more inhale here. On your exhale, circle the left hand forward and down, coming into your forward fold. 
Good. On your inhale, flat back, halfway lift. So again, strong core, shoulders back, hard and gaze out. And then exhale, easy twist, right hand down to the ground, or again, that block. Bend your right knee. Left arm will circle up towards the sky as you stretch your left leg as straight as it can go. So we're doing a few different things here, warming up the spine, finding that rotation, but also starting to get into the IT band. So in this side, it's the left IT band, the upper outer part of your left hip that we're starting to feel some sensation in. Look up at that left hand on your inhale, drag yourself all the way up, engaging your obliques as you go. Both arms will reach up and overhead, take an inhale. And then exhale, side bend, slide your left hand on the side of your left leg, reach your right arm up and over, big side body stretch. Yeah, grounding into the pinky edge side of your right foot. Take one more big breath in. And then exhale, circle the right hand forward and down, coming into your forward fold. Inhale, find flat back, halfway lift. So roll the shoulder heads back, draw the navel in. And then exhale, both hands down to the ground, step back to your high plank pose. Good, shift the weight forward into your fingerprints and toe tips. Bend your elbows, lower your belly all the way down to the ground. Good, again, once you get there, slide your legs together so that they touch. On your inhale, you'll lift your hands and shoulders off of your mat. Take a big breath in for your no hands baby cobra. Good, narrow the elbows back towards one another. Inhale, exhale, lower back down to the ground. From here, this time, a little bit more power. Tuck your toes, pull your navel up and in, and then press yourself up to straight arm plank. Take your inhale. Exhale, hips will go up, downward facing dog. Good, we'll be here for three big breaths. Inhale through your nose. Exhale, one. Wherever the mind is wandering, see if you can bring the attention back to the breath. So big inhale through your nose. Big breath out. Good, and one more time like that. Generous inhale. And easy exhale. I'll ask you to modify your down dog just a little bit here for the next thing that we do. So walk your feet about two to six inches closer to your hands than they are now. Great, from here, put a lot of pressure and energy into that right hand. Take your left hand to the outside of your right leg. So could be on your thigh, could be on the outside of your shin. You could be reaching to the outside of your right ankle, just not on the kneecap. Nice, so it feels like a thread the needle sort of action here. Good, as you press down into the right hand, can you take your gaze underneath your right armpit? Mm -hmm. So it should feel like a nice shoulder stretch, a little bit of a twist here. On your inhale, roll yourself forward to a three-point high plank. So the left hand will reach forward towards the top of your space. Take a big breath in. Exhale, lower the left hand back down. You're in a high plank pose. Go ahead, shift the weight forward into your fingerprints and toe tips. Bend your elbows, lower your belly all the way down to the ground. Nice. From here, press into your palms and straighten your elbows, coming into a straight arm cobra. Great, bend your right knee in half for a hamstring curl. So you wanna think heel towards your butt, right toes pointing up towards the sky. Then to fire up the core, tuck your left toes, float your left knee an inch off of the mat, and on your exhale, you'll round your right knee to your nose. Good, hold this for three. Yeah, lift up a little bit higher for two, I know, and step your foot forward on one. Great, pressing down into both of your feet. On your inhale, we'll rise up to a high lunge. Good, so think here, biceps are by the ears, inner thighs are hugging against one another, and again, we're going for squareness in the hips, so guiding the right hip back as you encourage the left hip forward. There can be a micro bend in the back left knee if need be, uh, but eventually I'd like you to encourage that left leg to be straight and strong, so lifting up the left quad, kicking back through the left heel. Go ahead, take one more big breath in here. And on your exhale, circle the left hand down to the ground, reach your right fingertips up towards the sky. You're coming into low lunge twist. Nice, so this flow is all about engaging the core, priming it for some more advanced postures that we'll do a little bit later on. So even in this twist, think on your inhale, I'm getting longer in my torso. On your exhale, it's navel towards spine to rotate the chest and the gaze more up towards the sky. 
Really nice. And then this top right arm, we'll draw some big circles with it, kind of like you're in softball and you're about to do an underhanded pitch. So think right hand goes from the back of the space towards the front of the space. Good, let's do two more of those. On this last one, circle the right arm, left arm, and left foot forward, arriving in chair pose. Yeah, so that entire transition takes a lot of core and a lot of stability in that bottom right leg. So thinking here in chair, I want to arrive with a strong abdominal, drawing the navel back towards the spine, finding this knitting of the bottom two ribs closer towards one another. And that'll also help take this posture out of the lower back and just settle it a little bit more firmly in the glutes and the hamstrings. Go ahead, take one more big breath in here. Settle in on your exhale. Great, so this transition, all about balance. On your inhale, float up onto the balls of your feet. So you're still in chair, just heels are up, so a little bit more precarious. Keep hugging the inner thighs together, keep wrapping the outer glutes against one another, and think navel in as chest lifts up. Really nice, we're gonna take five super slow counts to lower our butt all the way down to the ground. Lower down for five. Lower down for four. Ooh, yep, should feel a little shake here. Lower down for three. Good, for two. And softly land on one. Great, we'll move into Navasana boat pose. So let's all start with our hands behind the backside of our thighs. Lift your shin bones up parallel towards the sky. And then for your feet, I'd like them to be energized, but you get to choose the way that that energy happens. So some people like to flex their feet. Some people like to point their feet. And then there's this thing called a floint, which is in between a flex and a point where the majority of your foot is pointed, but your toes are flexed back. So find the way that feels the most energetic to you and then see if you can lift your chest up nice and proud here. Yeah, keep the navel drawing back. Maybe hands float off. Good, maybe biceps reach by ears. Maybe you straighten your legs, take an inhale. Stay on your exhale. On your inhale, you'll lower down to low boat or Ardhanavasana. Great. So this will feel like a hollow hold. Shoulders are off of the mat. Legs are hovering. On your next exhale, draw your knees back up to your chest and maybe reach the arms up and overhead for a little bit more of a balance challenge. Good. Let's do four more like that. So inhale, lowering yourself down. Exhale, dragging yourself back up to high boat. Good. Three more times. Inhale, lower yourself down. Exhale, draw yourself back up. Good for two here. Inhale, lower. Nice control. Exhale, come back up. And one more time. Inhale, lower yourself down. Good. Exhale, come back up. This time, inhale, lower yourself down. You're in Ardha Navasana. We'll hover here for three. We'll hover here for two. And all the way on your backs on one. Good. Hug your knees into your chest. Very nice. So a little bit of momentum here. Start to rock and roll up and down the length of your spine. Yeah, great. I'd like you to get so much that you can spring right up into chair pose. Feet land flat, arms up and hips low. It's also totally fine to place your hands on the ground to assist yourself into that chair pose. On your exhale, you'll take a forward fold. Inhale, flat back, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down. You can either step, step, jump, or skip your vinyasa. Eventually, we'll come back into our downward facing dog. Nicely done. Take a big breath in through your nose. And a big breath out. Let's adjust the distance of our dog for just a moment. So walk your feet about two to six inches closer to your hands. This time we'll keep the weight and the energy in the left hand and take our right hand, thread it underneath our left arm to the outside of our left leg. So again, you can hold onto your ankle, you can hold somewhere on your shin, somewhere on the outer thigh, just not on your kneecap there so that we're not pulling that kneecap out of alignment. Good, and then see if you can press both your left palm and your two heels down into the ground so that you feel that stretch starting to happen. On your exhale, I'd like you to drag your gaze underneath your left arm. Yeah, starting to feel a little bit more of a twist sensation here. On your inhale, you'll roll yourself forward to a three-point plank. So left hand stays down, right arm will reach forward towards the front of the space, trying to get that right bicep by the right ear, take an inhale. 
On your exhale, right hand comes down into your high plank pose. Shift the weight forward into your fingerprints and toe tips, and then lower your belly all the way down to the ground. On your inhale, we'll press ourselves up into the straight arm cobra. And then exhale, bend your left knee in half, come into that hamstring curl. So again, using the energy of the hamstring to bend the knee, try to get your left heel pretty close to your butt. You'll tuck your right toes, lift your right knee off of the mat on the inhale, and then exhale, round your left knee into your nose. Feel that really like a crunch, you're holding it for three. Good, hold it for two. And one, step the foot all the way forward. Nice, on your inhale, press down through both of your feet to rise up into your high lunge. We'll take a big breath here and just settle into the pose on the exhale. Guide your left hip back. Go ahead, encourage the right hip forward. And again, there, it's okay for there to be a micro bend in that back right knee, but eventually I'd like you to feel that leg is straight and strong. So lifting the quad up and kicking back through the heel. It's a little bit different than a gym uh, box lunge. This yoga lunge has one leg straight and one knee bent. Good, take one more big breath in. And then exhale, low lunge twist. We'll circle our right hand down to the ground and our left fingertips up towards the sky. Again, try to keep in the back of our minds that this flow is primarily to start to warm up the core. So can you drive your navel in toward your spine, knit the bottom tubes in towards one another, and then find the twist really from the strength of the core. So starting to fire up the obliques here. Take one more big breath in. On your exhale, we'll start with those arm circles on the left hand. So left hand moves towards the back of the space and then towards the front of the space, like a softball underhanded pitch. Good, let's do two more like that. On your last one, left arm will circle forward, right arm will circle forward, and you'll step forward into your chair pose arriving with your hips pretty close to knee level. Again, really important for the transitions here that we find that brace in the core so that it feels almost effortless to move the limbs. On your inhale, peel both of your heels up and off of your mat. You're coming into that tiptoe chair pose. Good, so the bend stays in the knees. You're just lifting your heels nice and high off of the yoga mat. And we'll take five slow counts to lower our butts all the way down to the ground. So slow for five. Good, lower down for four. Three, you're halfway there. Good for two. And you're down on the ground on one, arriving in your Navasana boat pose. Again, chest is proud, but core stays strong. So it feels almost like you did in chair pose. Nice flat back, nice proud heart, but you've got that super intense abdominal engagement, which is gonna make this pose really come alive. On your inhale, lower yourself down to Ardha Navasana. On your exhale, draw your knees back up to your chest, coming into your Navasana high boat. Good, inhale, lowering yourself down. If you want more of a challenge, biceps by ears as knees come closer to your chest. Now let's do three more like that. So inhale to lower. Good, exhale to lift up. Yeah, really nice. Two more times, inhale, lower. Exhale, come back up. This time, lower down and hold here for four. Hold here for three, good. Hold here for two. And you're on your backs on one. Nicely done. Hug your knees into your chest and start to build momentum here by rocking up and down the length of your spine. We want enough that eventually we can pop up into our chair pose. So if for you that means you need a little bit of assistance with hands on the ground, totally cool. Find your hips low and your chest up in your Ukatasana chair pose. Take one more big breath in. And then exhale, forward fold, let it go. Inhale, come to flat back, halfway lift. And exhale, hands down. You can either step, step, jump, or again, skip vinyasa. Totally cool to leave out the push-ups, to change the vinyasa by adding push-ups in any way that feels good to you. Downward facing dog is where we all meet. And we'll take two nice full breaths here. Big breath into the nose. And a big breath out. One more inhale. And exhale. Good, on your inhale, float your right leg up to the sky, coming into your down dog split. On your exhale, draw your knee into your nose around like your angry cat, so feel that sensation in your core. Good, on your inhale, float the leg back up to the sky, down dog split. 
Exhale, round, draw the knee into the nose, mimicking the tension that you feel in your breath and your body. And one more time, inhale, float the leg up to the sky. This time, exhale, draw the knee to the nose and lightly step your foot forward. Good, on your inhale, sweep both of your arms up, coming into a high lunge. So pressing through that right heel, bend deeply into your right knee and think about verticality in your torso. Navel is drawing in, fingertips are lifting up. Go ahead, take a big breath in. On your exhale, wing your arms back behind you. Pitch your torso forward at a 45 degree angle. We're coming into a power lunge, thinking palms will face down, knuckles will face up. Lift your knuckles up a little bit higher and then try to slide your pinky fingers closer together behind you so that you're feeling the upper part of your back start to activate. The navel will be drawing in away from your thigh and will start to probably feel some sensation in the right quad. Know that that's totally okay. Again, decide where you're gonna place your attention. You can either place the attention on that annoyance, that intensity, that feeling in your quad, or you can decide to drag the attention back to the breath. On your inhale, reach your left arm forward, keeping your right hand back behind you. So we're coming into a, a version of a twist here in the power lunge. Yeah, arms wanna feel as if they're being pulled in two opposite directions. Good, and then we'll use that left hand, circle it all the way up and open, arriving in your warrior two. You'll spin your left heel down to the ground, keep that big bend in your right knee, but this time add some weight into the pinky edge side of your left foot. Good, as your right knee bends forward, can you pull your left inner thigh back away from the right knee? Yeah, and that's just gonna turn on the lower body a little bit more. Good, from here, Flip your front right palm, tip yourself up and back, coming into your peaceful warrior. And then notice if you started to straighten the right knee any amount, see if you can re-bend and re-engage that sensation in the right quad. And then decide where you're placing your attention. So again, it could be on the intensity, or you could decide to draw the attention back to the breath. On your next inhale, you'll straighten your front right leg, on your exhale, start to reach your right hand forward as you cut your hips back. Eventually, the right hand will reach so far forward, it has to travel down to the grounds, maybe the shin or the thigh, maybe the block. And we're arriving in triangle pose here. So instead of dumping weight into that bottom right hand, see if you can make this really engaged in the lower body. Pull your quads up. Good. Inner thighs will squeeze towards one another. Mm -hmm. And instead of kind of popping your butt out like you're yoga twerking, I want you to lengthen your tailbone down, do a little bit of a tuck of your booty underneath you, good. And then feel as if you're reaching up for something with the left fingertips. So nice and light on the right hand, right shoulder, much more about core engagement and lower body engagement. Good, keep all of that sensation. So inner thighs lifting up, quads lifting up. Just turn your gaze down to the ground, put a soft bend in your right knee, crawl your right fingertips about six inches forward ahead of your right foot. And as you do so, slowly start to float your left leg up to the sky. We're coming into Ardish and Drasana Half Moon. Good, so blocks are incredibly helpful here in Half Moon, especially if you find that the right hand is not on the ground and you'd like it to be, just take your block any height underneath the right hand and allow the ground to meet you. Good, so Half Moon, we wanna stay really engaged here in the core especially, so draw your navel in, ribs closed, but the left hip is gonna roll open on top of the right, so you feel your hip flexors open here. Flex into the left heel and then lift your heel up at least in line with your butt, if not a little bit higher. So most of the time we're like, okay, if my right leg, my standing leg is a little bit wonky, I'm gonna fall. But especially in our single leg balances here, half moon, if your left heel is below your glute, I would say probably 75% chance that you're gonna fall. If your left heel is in line or a little bit above your glute, then maybe 90% chance you'll stay. Take one more big breath in here. On your exhale, circle your left hand and your left foot forward. Come into forward fold. Heel to your feet together so that they touch. Inhale, chair pose. Arms will go up, hips will go low. Good, so see if you can hug your knees and inner thighs together. Yeah, draw the navel back, lift up the thumbs, find some broadness across your chest. Take one more big breath in, maybe sitting a little bit lower. 
and exhale forward fold. On your inhale, flat back halfway lift, roll the shoulder heads back, draw the navel in. Exhale, take both of your hands down to the ground. You step back to high plank pose, and then we'll shift our weight forward and move through our vinyasa. So you wanna bend your elbows halfway for chaturanga or lower your belly to the mat. Point your toes behind you, lift up your chest, your version of a heart opening here. And then exhale, drag your hips up and back. We'll all meet in downward facing dog. Good, from your down dog on your inhale, float your left leg high to the sky, down dog split. On your exhale, draw your knee into your nose, round like your angry cat. Good, inhale, float the leg back up to the sky, nice and strong in that left glute. Exhale, contract, feel that strength happen now in your core. Good, one more time like this, inhale, float the leg up. And exhale, draw your knee into your nose, light step, left foot forward. Good, press down into your two feet on your inhale, sweep both of your arms up to the sky, coming into your high lunge on this side. So big bend in the left knee. We're trying to feel sensation in the lower body in this flow. So instead of backing away from that intensity that you're starting to feel in the left quad, I want you to actually go into it. Go ahead, take one more big breath in here. And then on your exhale, wing your arms back behind you as you pitch your torso forward 45 degrees. We're coming into power lunge. So a lot of this is gonna be weight bearing in the lower body, but you can help yourself out here by feeling supported in the core. So navel is drawing back, bottom to ribs coming in towards one another, just like you would in a chair pose. Lift up your knuckles a little bit more high as you slide your pinky fingers closer together so that upper back is feeling strong, supported. Good, and then start to reach that right hand forward as you keep your left hand drawing back behind you. You're coming into a T-twist with your arms. Good, and then again, just notice, can I lift up a little bit more powerfully in my right quad? Can I hug my inner thighs together here? Yes, you're almost there. Start to circle the right hand up. Open, warrior two, spinning the right heel down to the ground. Good, so there's still that generous bend in the left knee. Re-engage. Take your gaze over the middle finger of your left hand. Good, so your chest is facing the side, but your gaze is going forward here in warrior two. Keep the gaze going forward. Keep that lift of your ribs away from your hip flexors. Just flip your front left palm. Tip yourself up and back, coming into your peaceful warrior. So again, the intensity is something that we want to lean into today, especially when it's in the lower body. Can you re-engage that bend in your left knee? Good, and from that bend, that anchor, can you lift up and out of your left hip flexor, feeling a nice side body stretch all across the left side of your waist. On your next inhale, start to straighten the front left leg. On your exhale, reach your left hand forward, your right hand back as you sass your hips back towards the right. And then eventually you'll drip your fingertips down towards the ground, your ankle, your shin, your thigh, maybe a block. So for triangle pose, I'm not really interested in how low your hand goes. I'm actually much more interested in the engagement and the support of the lower body. So can you pull your quads up towards your hip flexors? Can you hug your inner thighs closer towards one another so that the left hand, the left shoulder is doing almost no work here and it's way more abdominals all the way down through your heels that are holding you up in this shape. From here, turn your gaze down towards the ground. It's helpful for the transition. Put a soft bend back into your left knee, then crawl your left fingertips forward about six inches, either onto the ground or onto your block. As you do, float your right heel up towards the sky, coming into your half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. So you'll notice half moon is pretty much like triangle, except for you're standing on one leg instead of two. So both legs have to stay super engaged here, pulling the quads up. You'll feel that inner thigh hugging up as well. And then start to engage the outer part of your right glute by floating your right heel up just a few inches higher. Again, when that heel is in line or a little bit above the glute, it's way easier to balance. Go ahead, take one more big breath in. On your exhale, circle the right hand and the right foot to the top of your mat. You're coming into forward fold. And then right away, heel to the feet together. Inhale to chair pose. Arms will go up, hips will go low. Again, drawing the navel in. So we're thinking intensity from your abdominals all the way down to your heels. And then buoyancy, lift, lightness from your chest to your fingertips. Take one more big in. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. 
Inhale, find flat back, halfway lift, roll the shoulders back. Exhale, two hands down to the ground. You can step, step back to high plank or maybe jump back to chaturanga. Modify your vinyasa in any way that feels good for you. Your inhale will take you up to some kind of back bend, some kind of heart opener. Your exhale will drag your hips up and back to downward facing dog. Nicely done. Let's dance through that a little bit more breath to movement style, adding some variations along the way. On your inhale, float your right leg high to the sky, down dog split. On your exhale, draw your knee to your nose and lightly step your foot forward. Inhale, two arms circle up towards the sky, high lunge. Exhale, wing the arms back behind you. Pitch the torso forward for your power lunge. Inhale, reach the left arm forward as the right hand stays going back. Open up to your warrior two. Inhale, settle in on your exhale. So re-engage that bend in the front right knee. I know it wants to straighten. Flip your front right palm on your inhale. Tip yourself up, reaching back into your peaceful warrior. Drive into your front right heel. On your inhale, stretch the right leg straight. Start to reach your right hand forward, forward, forward. And your exhale melts you down into your triangle pose. Good. Put a soft bend back into your front right knee. On your inhale, right hand to the ground or a block. Left leg and left arm will float up into your half moon. So again, pausing here just for a moment, I like you to feel that lift up and out of the right hip flexor instead of kind of dumping all of your weight onto your right leg. What if there was energy moving out and away from the yoga mat? Take a big breath in here. On your exhale, circle your left hand and your left foot forward, forward fold. Inhale, sweep both arms up to the sky, coming into your chair pose. Stuff's going to get kind of intense here. Navel is pulling in. Take an inhale. On your exhale, bring your hands to prayer heart center and pause. So elbows are making one straight line from elbow tip to elbow tip. Take an inhale to find length in your spine. And then on your exhale, hook your left elbow to the outside of your right thigh. We're coming into a chair with a prayer hand twist. Good. So just peek down for a moment at your left knee, probably moving ahead of your right. Can you drag your left hip back a few inches so that the knees stay in one line and then sit your hips just a smidge lower so that your booty is below your head, below your heart. Good. Take one more big breath in. Stay on your exhale. Oh, I know you're starting to feel that intensity on your inhale. Unwind normal chair pose. And exhale, forward folds. Good. On your inhale, flat back, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down. You can step, step, jump, or skip your vinyasa, coming right back into downward facing dog. Again, if you're taking vinyasa, the inhale will lift your chest, and the exhale will lift your hips, downward facing dog. One more time. Let's find that left side. Inhale, float your left leg high to the sky. Exhale, draw your knee to your nose. Lightly step your foot forward. Inhale, reach both of your arms up. You're in high lunge. Engage into that deep bend in your left knee. Feel that left quad, left glute, left hamstring. Exhale, wing your arms back behind you. You're in power lunge. Again, the right quad is lifting up. The abs are super strong. Inhale, send your right arm forward towards the front of the space. So you've got that T twist happening in your arms. On your exhale, start to gently guide yourself open into your warrior two. You're spinning your right heel down. Just notice, did I straighten my left knee? Can I re-bend, re-engage that intensity in the left leg? On your inhale, flip your front left palm, tip yourself up and back, coming into peaceful warrior. Press into that front left foot, stretch your left leg straight, next inhale. Exhale, start to reach the left hand forward, 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 and gently lower the left hand down to the ground. Again, maybe a block, maybe the shin, maybe the ankle. Good. Turn the gaze down towards the ground. Rebend your front left knee. Crawl the left fingertips forward, maybe to ground, maybe to block, and then use all of that strength of your outer glute to float your right leg up into your half moon. Again, pause for a moment. Engage the abdominals. Feel the outer right glute here, and then see if maybe you can use the strength of your obliques to float up a little bit more in your torso, taking some of that weight bearing out of the left leg. Take one more big breath in. On your exhale, circle the right hand and the right foot forward to the top of your mat, coming into forward fold. Heel to your feet together so that they touch. Inhale to chair pose. 
Good. In your chair pose, hands come together at prayer, heart center, elbows nice and wide. So you want to make one straight line from one elbow to the other and then maintain that line. Take an inhale here. On your exhale, hook your right elbow on the outside of your left thigh, coming into a prayer hand twist in your chair. And I often do this in my own body. I'll take my left hand and kind of press my knees over to the right so that I can help myself hook my right elbow to the outside of my left leg. And then I'll rejoin my hands in prayer. Like any twist that we do on your inhale, I want you to think about lengthening the torso. On your exhale, press your palms together and rotate your right ribs more towards the sky. Go ahead, take one more big breath in. Sit your hips lower on your exhale. On your inhale, unwind, find normal chair pose. I know the legs are feeling it. You've got this. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, flat back, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. And then exhale, hands down. You can step, step, or jump back to Chaturanga, or skip your vinyasa altogether. Again, we'll eventually meet in our downward facing dog and be here for three generous breath cycles. Big breath in through your nose. Big breath out. When we flow through postures uh, with a little bit more immediacy, sometimes it's easier for our minds to stay engaged with the task that we're doing. So it's when we take these pauses in down dog and just feel our breaths inside of our body that we're giving our mind the challenge that we do with our body in the asana. Can I keep my mind engaged in what's happening here, even if what's happening is stillness and silence and softness? Take one more big breath in and a big breath out. This time on your inhale, lift your heels, bend your knees, tuck your chin to your chest and roll yourself all the way forward to your high plank pose. Good, exhale, slide your hips back into that bent knee down dog. Inhale, roll yourself forward into the high plank. Exhale, sliding the hips back into the down dog. Good, one more time like that. Inhale, roll yourself forward, high plank pose. Shift the weight forward into your fingerprints and toe tips. And we'll take five slow counts to bring the belly to the mat. Lower down five, lower down four. Good, lower down three, I know it's slow. Lower down two, and you're down on one. Once you get there, point your toes behind you. Good. Slide your fingertips off the side of your mat, keeping your hands in line with your shoulders. And we wanna come up onto our finger top so there's some space between your palm and the mat, kind of like spider fingers, or maybe like there's a cupcake that you don't wanna smoosh under your hand, or sometimes people image that there's like an egg that they're trying not to crush. On your inhale, you'll roll yourself up, keeping the elbows bent for the first one into that wide arm variation of cobra. And exhale, melt the chest back down. Good, let's do two more like that. So the inhale, you'll lift your chest up. And exhale, melt yourself back down. Good, one more time, inhale, roll up your chest, maybe straightening the elbows a little bit more, find broadness across the heart. And exhale, melt yourself back down. Good, slide your hands down by your hips. Think palms down, knuckles up. And then bring the legs back together so that they touch if they separated during that last sequence. Good, from here I'd like you to take your gaze back to center, roll your shoulders back and up and off your mat, lift your hands up so that the knuckles are lifting up towards the sky. Think about sliding your pinky fingers a little bit closer towards one another, and then maybe float your legs up and off of the ground as well. If you're taking the legs up in your locust pose, keep the legs together so that they touch. Big toes, inner thighs, yeah. So you're one straight long line here. Take a big breath in. And exhale, let it go. Good, turn one cheek to the mat, bend your knees in half and give yourself a little bit of a windshield wiper with your shin bones, just to neutralize out any funkiness that happened in the lower back just now. Good, re-extend your legs nice and long, turn your gaze back towards center. So option one is to stay with what we just did, rolling the shoulders up, lifting the hands up and off of the mat. Option two is to keep that lift, but take your hands behind you, interlace webbing to webbing grip. Your palms will come together so that they touch. And on your next inhale, you'll press your knuckles back towards your heels and lift the knuckles up and off of the lower part of your back. Just a little bit of a deeper chest expansion here. 
Good, and we'll stay here for two more breaths. So inhale, find a lift in your torso. Exhale to maintain. Good, on your inhale, lifting up, maybe lifting the legs just an inch higher. This time, exhale, let it all the way go. Turn the other cheek to the mat. Good. Let your hands come down by your hips and then bend your knees and half again. One more time, that windshield wiper, right to left, right to left. Nice, and then let's turn the gaze back towards center. Re-extend the legs nice and long. And one more time like that. So first variation, hands lift up, pinky fingers slide closer together as you lift your chest, lift your gaze, lift your legs. Option two, come to that webbing to webbing interlace behind the small of your back. Press your knuckles back and lift them up, finding that slide of your shoulder blades together. A little bit more space across your chest. Take one more big breath in here. And let it all the way go. Good, one more time. Any cheek to the mat, bend your knees, a windshield wiper. When you feel ready, re-extend your legs nice and long and then just gently roll on over to your backside. So I like a good old log roll, but if there's another way that makes sense to you, totally take that. Once you've made your way onto your back, guide your right knee up to your chest and keep your left leg extended long onto your yoga mat. Go ahead, take a big breath in here. And on your exhale, we'll come into an easy spinal twist. So right knee will go across your body to the left you can either take your right arm out straight or bend your elbow in half like a goalpost. Neither is right or wrong. What we're looking for in the twist here is that both of your shoulders stay glued onto the ground. And then the right knee, it doesn't have to touch the ground. Maybe one day it will. Good. Coming back to the breath here, finding the inhale, the space, the exhale. Can you sink a little bit deeper inside of the twist? a few more breaths like that so this is a great moment for us to just notice what our tendencies our habits our patterns are for some of us the more active part of the practice is easier it's easy to do the stuff that's intense it's easy to find that mindset of push of go of try of do and the harder part of the practice can actually be this when we're softer, we're holding postures for longer, and we have to sit inside of discomfort. All we're doing right now is noticing that tendency. Take a big breath into your nose. And a big breath out. Good. Gently come back to center. Hug both of your knees up and into your chest. We'll still work with that right leg. I want you to flex both of your feet. Cross your right ankle on top of your left thigh so that you're making a figure four shape with your legs. For some of our bodies, we've got really tight glutes, and you might be here placing the left foot on the ground with the right knee across your left ankle. If that feels like not a stretch at all for you, you can take this up just a little bit by lifting the shape up threading your arms through to the back side of your left thigh and then think about pulling the left thigh in closer to you as you encourage your right knee farther away from you in this figure four and again whatever's happening in this posture whether that stretch that we're feeling in our glutes you register it as like oh this is a good stretch i love this or this is a lot of sensation and i can't be here i want you to come back to that breath Decide to place your attention on the breath. Decide to stay here for two more beats. Inhale through the nose. Exhale. One more big breath in. And a big breath out. Good, let's uncross, keep the left knee at our chest and send our right leg long away from us on the yoga mat. Take an inhale here. And then exhale, gentle twist, guide your left knee across your body to the right. Again, the left arm can either go out long or bent. It kind of depends on what's going on with your shoulders and your chest today. And we want to do the variation that feels like a gentle opening. So both shoulders are staying on the ground. The left knee can be hovering off of the mat. You can place a block underneath it. Sometimes that feels really nice and supportive. But again, I want you to notice what is my tendency? What are my habits? What are my patterns? And do my patterns control me more than I would like? 
So if it feels like here stillness is hard and you just want to fidget and get out of it and do the next thing, like this feels like a waste of your time, just notice that thought pattern that's happening. And how many of the interactions that you have outside of your mat mimic that pattern? Like, I just need to get out of this. I need to wiggle out of this discomfort. I can't stay here. I can't be here. Part of the practice is learning how to tolerate uh, distress. Take a big breath in. And a big breath out. Gently come back to center, both knees up to your chest. Flex both of your feet, still working with that left leg. Cross the left ankle on top of the right thigh. Again, option one is right foot is on the mat in the figure four. Option two for a little bit more intensity, thread your arms through to the underside of your right thigh. Guide the right thigh closer to your chest as the left knee goes a little bit farther away from you. So we focus on the breath and the yoga practice because when we intentionally place our attention on something other than distress, other than that sensation, other than the thoughts that are like, get out, wiggle out, do whatever you can to escape, we begin to understand that our bodies can actually tolerate a little bit more than we're allowing, that our hearts and our minds can actually tolerate a little bit more than we're allowing. And it's not that we have to completely disregard that voice that says, leave, but we get to make a choice. Can I be here? Can I stay? Can I breathe? Or do I need to leave? Take one more big breath in and big breath out. Gently uncross, hug both knees to your chest, separate your knees nice and wide. We're coming into a happy baby. You can hold on to your knees. You might hold on to your ankles, shin bones, feet, rock side to side. Just a little massage for the lower back. Good, bring the soles of your feet together so that they touch. Wrap your hands around the pinky side edge of your feet, keeping the knees nice and wide. Place this entire shape onto your yoga mat. We're finding our way into Supta Baddha Konasana. Once your legs have found their way onto the ground, take your left hand on your heart, your right hand on your belly, and we'll pause here for three breaths together. The mind will want to wander away from the breath, from the stillness. But see if you can draw your attention back here with the sound and the feeling of the breath in your body. So on your inhale, feel your belly rise, feel your heart rise. And exhale, feel that gentle softening back into yourself. Good, two more times like that. Inhale, belly, heart. Exhale to soft. Good, one more time, breathing in. And breathing out. Hey, if you're enjoying flowing and breathing with me, remember to like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time.